public will have heard for many a month now that for the first time in the history of Fiji we have a truly democratic electoral system with one person equals one vote equals one value. Well, it sounds very, very good and there are some positive aspects in the electoral system which we shall see later. But there are also many problems, especially in the way that the electoral system and the voting system have been manipulated. Let us start with the basic statistics first for this September 2014 elections. There are about 590,000 registered voters. I estimate maybe somewhere between 500 and 530,000 will vote, which will be a turnout of about 90%, which is what it used to be in the best of all the elections previously. An extremely unfortunate part of this 2013 constitution and the electoral system which has been imposed on Fiji, there's been no popular discussion about it, no popular approval by it, no elected parliament approved it, no people's assembly approved it, and despite the fact that there were many other much better systems proposed by the political parties and independent advisors, this system has been imposed on Fiji. And it has one element which is particularly undesirable, which is that of the 5% threshold. For any independent candidate or for any party to be considered for election to parliament, they must achieve a minimum of 5% of all those voting. And in Fiji's case, it will turn out to be somewhere around about 26,500 votes, an, an incredibly high figure. We should also note that uh, if you have a 50-seat parliament and uh, there are about 500,000 voters voting, then approximately 10,000 voters will be electing one parliamentarian on average. So the threshold of 26,500 is incredibly high. There will be only one constituency and all 248 candidates will be appearing on the ballot paper, but as numbers only. There will be no names, there will be no photos on the ballot paper, there will be no party symbols on the ballot paper. And voters throughout the country, educated and uneducated alike, will be choosing one number to vote for by a tick, a cross, or a sickle. And you can see, of course, that this will pose a problem to many, many voters out there who cannot remember numbers. The elections office finally relented and is allowing a candidate's list to be taken into the booth so that the voters can be assisted. But unfortunately, the candidate's list itself is not all that helpful. Fiji are stuck with this system. So what will they do? They will tick their chosen candidates and on the night of the polling day, 17th of September, the elections office officials will begin to count the votes. And after they have counted the votes for each candidate, they will be ranking those candidates according to the number of votes received. Now, I have given you a simple table over here where I've got the candidates already ranked by the number of votes they've received for each of the parties and for all the independents. I have not put in there any of the candidate numbers because of the number of votes they have received. Party ranking will not matter at all. Party ranking will not matter. So what you will see there, of course, is that party A has the lead up, presumably, receiving a massive 80,000 votes. And the others do not receive particularly any great numbers of votes. Parties B and C have votes more evenly distributed. And this is no doubt a reflection also of the party strategy. I think it is pretty obvious now already that there is one party which is focusing on asking voters to vote for only one person and one number. It's as if this party is a one-man show.
but of course we know it is a two-man show. But astonishingly, this party is not focusing on all its candidates equally, and this party is not even bothering to debate any of the issues. They are simply engaging in their advertising blitz. What happens after all these votes have been counted? Well, let me summarize it there in this table. <clears throat> the first task of the supervisor of elections will be to eliminate those who have not met the 5% threshold. So you'll see from the table in front of you, row A gives you all the votes received by the parties, party A, B going up to G, and the votes received by the independent candidates, 1 and 2. You'll notice that only one of the independents has met the threshold and is therefore elected. The second independent with 2,000 votes has not and is eliminated. Party F and G do not meet the threshold and so they are also eliminated. And all you then le have left are parties A, B, C, D and E who will then divide up the remaining 49 seats in Parliament to join that one independent making 50. This table now shows you a very simple way of looking at how many candidates from each party will be elected. Now on the media, you have seen the elections office give you their quotient method of deciding how many from each party will be elected. It's very, very difficult to understand how that results in proportionality. The method I'm giving over here gives you exactly the same answer as the de Hunt method which the Supervisor of Elections and the Elections Office and the Electoral Decree is telling the Elections Office to use. With those votes received by parties A to E adding up to 477,000 votes, then the percent of the 49 seats they're entitled to is given by row E in that table. And row F gives you, of the 49 seats, how many seats they would be entitled to in exact fractions. So you will see that party A is entitled to 16.8, B 16.8, C 9.0, D and E are about 3%. If you round them off very roughly and you make sure that you add up to 50, you get 17 seats for party A, 17 seats for party B, 9 seats for party C, 3 for party D and 3 for party E. Now, I have to admit one thing here. In order to make at least one independent win and not discourage independence from standing, I have given the independent 27,000 votes, one independent 27,000 votes. Now, those of you who think that the independent will probably not get that many votes, what you can do is you can distribute those 27,000 votes or as much of them as you wish to all the other parties depending on who you think voters will be likely to vote for. In which case what would happen is that you will increase the number of seats going to parties A, B, C, D and E in proportion to what your own preferences are. Now, here is the sad feature in these elections. When we eliminate all the small parties and the independents who do not make the 27,000 threshold, 26,500 threshold, all those votes effectively become equal to zero. And they don't count at all. Absolutely not one bit. And we will see how, in fact, the votes are not really equal at all when we look at who exactly are decided to be elected to Parliament. Once we've determined how many seats are entitled to each party according to my proportionality method, or it could have been done by the de Hunt method that the Supervisor of Elections is advertising, you will see that in Party A, because the party leader obtained a very large number of votes, he pulls into party, into parliament, a whole lot of people who received very few votes. 
But party B was campaign focused on all of its candidates. You can see the votes were pretty well distributed and by the time you get to the 17th candidate that gets into parliament, that person was getting 3,500 votes. For party C, by the time you get to the 9th candidate, that person was getting 4,200 votes. Party D, the third successful candidate, had 6,000. Party E, the third successful candidate, had 7,000 votes. Nobody from party F it goes into parliament, or from party G, even though you'll notice, of course, that the first few candidates for both party F and party G have quite a reasonable number of votes. And so also, of course, does the independent too have a reasonable number of votes. Now, if you were to redistribute some of the votes which I have given to the independent party and the small party to the other parties, then of course they will be receiving more seats in Parliament. Now, voters, of course, will be thinking, where is the equality of votes if you are rejecting people with 5,000 votes and 4,000 votes, but electing people with 1,000 or 2,000 or 200 votes? Well, unfortunately, this is one of the results of this electoral system. It allows a particular party, it allows any party, to focus all the campaigning efforts on one or two persons. In, in one particular example, they're focusing the entire campaigning effort on voters voting for what just one number and one person, the party leader. And it would seem that those people who created this system knew what their electioneering strategy was going to be. Why is it that the ballot paper did not have photos of candidates? Why is it that there are no party symbols on the ballot paper? Why is it that there are no party symbols on the candidates list? I suspect that it's because one political party, which itself created this electoral system, had already planned their electoral strategy, which would be to focus on only one person, the party leader, and one number and that their advertising campaign, their electioneering campaign, would simply be just vote for this one number. Now the whole purpose behind the open list system, which was advocated by certain people very close to the regime, was that it would allow voters to choose their candidates and not parties. The reason why they did not want a closed list system was allegedly that parties could not be trusted to put good candidates on the top of the list. Having an open list therefore supposedly meant that it would be the voters who would decide who gets into parliament, not the party. But what you can see here in the Fiji elections is in fact the opposite. One party particularly is focusing completely on just one person and the large number of votes that will go to that one person will pull all kinds of people into parliament. In other words, it would almost seem as if for one particular party, they're basically saying to their candidates, don't worry about getting votes for yourself, don't worry about campaigning, the party will be in the parliament and they will decide what happens. It will possibly be again a one-man or two-man show after the election.